We use an ALK 4754 process, and we implemented a lot of procedures to become part 21 Juliet. And with that in mind, we can say we can go to bigger applications. But the controls and the material is working even at high altitudes. We showed now around about 7,200 feet. That's not a lot. But in the lab, we showed 32,000 feet how to control that. So in the under pressure chamber. What we can say is this technology is working and we know how to control it. Hydrogen resource, so where to get the hydrogen into the plane. We see that the liquid hydrogen storage system can be done. This is a storage system together with air liquid, which will be implemented in June into the new plane. And then we will have a hydrogen storage system, which is very high energetic with this kind of storage, which we have here. We can fly with a plane you can see here in the hall A7, around about 1,500 officially, unofficially much, much more than that. So the range is there, the power is there, the implementation has to be done. So just some ideas. Uh, we are in the stage that we uh, drive this plane. So we had seven test campaigns outside Germany. And now we are coming back. We went to the airport of Stuttgart. The airport of Stuttgart has around about 200 to 300 uh, movements per day. And what we do today, we implement this plane in the daily operations on the ground and in flight. So the very interesting work was to synchronize the new fuel with firefighters, with the ground crews, with the companies who sell fuel and all those things. It's uh, very interesting. We can recharge at the airport, but we cannot refuel at the airport because we do not have a license. At the airport, you have to have a license to refuel some kinds of fuel. We learned that from some EASA driven or EASA controlled airports. If you want to do some business, you have to have a license to sell fuel. So what we do is we recharge our plane at the moment. That has to change when we go into competitive applications. But just to give you an impression, there is a lot of work on ground which has to be done to get uh, this into a product. Then in flights, we have seen that we can cope with all the ATC behavior. So we had some time to wait. We missed the slot. We had to wait 28 minutes at the line. Some people who fly, they know with an internal combustion engine, they have to start moving around energy from, so not energy, but fuel. So the plugs are not getting uh, fouled and so on. We learned that the system is working very stable and very constantly. Our controls could manage that very long time staying around. Then we had a flight uh, now last uh, Wednesday from Stuttgart to Friedrichshafen very early. Then we went to a, a little bit higher altitude. I was really astonished. Two weeks before of this, we had a press release. The key solution for the fuel cell in aviation is to control relative humidity, temperature, stoichiometry. Nobody was caring about this. I have to say, two weeks after that, we made like an announcement. We have a world record, 7,200 feet. We got in like five hours, 70 newspapers coming back, all the hydrogen is flying and so on. Just to give you an impression, I think we have to do a lot of marketing. We have to do a lot of teaching to understand, to maybe to show that it's working. But more important of that is the message. The technology behind all of this is working. So with this in mind, our way forward, we will finish the test campaign with the LH2. It will be the first LH2 liquid hydrogen storage system flying into an electric airplane worldwide, never done before. And with this, we will have this passenger plane flying around. With this redundant technology, which we have in the powertrain, we will go into the 1.5 megawatt ground test. We started 1st of January together with Deutsche Aircraft, a project together with Deal Aerospace, IABG, Premium Aerotech, and some other partners to build a 1.5 megawatt fuel cell to implement that into a 40-seater and to take that in 2026 to a first permit to fly uh, allowed flight. 2028, we have another part. I will not talk here about that 
going into commercialization of some smaller powertrains, around about 300 kilowatts, who is interested can find me at root. And with that in mind, we will step by step go and implement this. Now, uh, where is the part forward? Today, 130 kilowatts, understanding the technology, understanding the controls, 2025, going into the megawatt scale. To do really transport capacity, we have to change our way of thinking, having regional airports, intra-regional airports, also at uh, propelled, or we, have, we need airplanes at intra-regional airport, or we do business as usual, and go transport capacity. I'm not talking about smaller, let's say, uh, VIP airplanes. We have to go into the 120 passenger class. So that is crucial if we want to succeed with hydrogen. So we need this middle step, which will cost a lot of money, but we need CS25 experience, and based on that, then go to the single aim sub uh, structure, so to the lowest one. From there, we are a little bit conservative. If I would do marketing, my world tracking record is fine and I'm the best. We can fly 200 passengers. To be honest, from today's perspective, yes, I think we can fly them 20 years from now, from a technological perspective, but the money for that. And I just want to put you also a perspective on the financial need which we need for the challenge which is in front of us. And that is not only a challenge regarding plane development, that is a challenge regarding where the energy will come from and how can we use that energy as efficient as possible. And what we see today is, I don't want to go into political stuff, everyone knows what happens around us, but really to have a change going from hydrocarbons coming out of a hole in the ground to renewable energy, the challenge is there as a system aviation, including the fuel which is needed for that aviation. So next step, some just two slides on aviation and where the fuel is coming from. Fuel cell compared to fuel cell to hydrogen burning and compared to synthetic air fuel. We go there, first line up to 5,400 kilometers, it's fine, doesn't matter at the moment. Could be 2,000, 3,000, 4,000. You can go up to 10,000 kilometers with hydrogen combustion. And then compare that, please, with the synthetic fuel which we have today, 20,000 kilometers. So only the thrombose schlumpfe, so will, will maybe allow you not to go far than that. One important point, implication, novel architecture, development of airport infrastructure and logistics. On the right side, a fat green current architecture, business as usual, infrastructure as it is no problem but then you go down noise reduction silent operation low vibration 15 dba we had to tell people visitors 50 meters away from the plane from the runway please take care the plane is just taking off now it's 50 meters in front of you they were not aware of that so that is really low noise and then we have 75 to 90% reduction, 30 to 60. Comparing that, you can say, okay, 60 is enough. But then you go to one point. If you want to have e-fuels based on energy coming from renewable, you need 4.6 times the energy which you need for the mission, including everything from the renewables to the mission. If you go with the hydrogen, you need 1.7. That's a lot. So you need, if you want to fly 100 units mission, you need 170 units of energy to drive that. If you go synthetic air fuel, you need 460 units. So this is, okay, we can say energy is enough there. Let's put just solar power plants, wind power plants in the Sahara, in North Dakota. North Dakota has the opportunity and the performance to have the whole energy of the US just from wind. If you put North Dakota and you put a lot of wind energy production there, you can have not the electric energy, you can have enough energy to propel whole US. 
So there are really potentials. Go to Morocco, go to Tunisia, go to Spain, Italy. That's a lot. But now the challenge is, is the number, the absolute number. So let's take a, a, a look what would mean if you go renewables. 250 terawatt hour is the energy which was converted from renewables in 2020 in Germany with our all installed wind and power plants. So the challenge is the absolute number. We will need for Europe 2000 kilometers, not the long range, not the flying 4000 kilometers, not US, nothing, only for Europe. We will need for the missions 370 terawatt hours if we go with hydrogen and we will need 960 terawatt hours if we go with synthetic air fuel. Please do not look at the numbers on the, on the money. Then we go further and we say 100 units there, 100 units here. I do not have to invest storage infrastructure, I do not have to invest AC technology. Business as usual improve incrementally, evolutionary, your plane, you put your normal money on there, do not invest nothing else. Now, now let's go to the numbers. You need space, but you need also investment to have your energy. You will need 280 billion in investments to invest into solar power plants and wind power plants. If you want to do that in the next 20 years, to be easy, you have to invest 15 billion a year just to produce your energy which you need. And please take aware, you are in the region of 2.5% worldwide of the energy needed, and you are in competition with all the others who want it the next 20 years. So there is no lunch free like, they will do it and I can get it. Everyone will pay for it. You will have a single source. Expect, expect that you do not get energy for free. And the, I would say the fairy tale, let's install them power and then out of the fluctuations, I will do my business. 2030, we expect in Germany 30, gigawatt hours of surplus energy when we go the path down. Compare that with what we need. That's a little bit. Increase that by a factor of 10. That's a little bit. What we need is, we need the business, where to get the energy from, a lot of investments, and go forward. Now compare that with the sink fuel. You go with 700 billion to install that energy. You need 40 billion for the electrolyzer. You need 16, 16 billion for the electrolyzer on the, on, the, on the side of the hydrogen pump. You go storage infrastructure for the most 90, so for the 90 most important airports in Europe. And then you need a sim fuel, 40 billion again, and you do not install storage and new aircraft technology. So you will have a delta, very easy to calculate, around about 800 to 300 billion, let's say for the next 20 years, I would say for that delta of 500 billion, we can develop a plane, all we, not each to fly alone, Airbus, Boeing, whoever, Embraer, 328. We can really develop for that difference, a plane for 20 billion or for two times 10 billion to have emission free and we will definitely stay from an overall perspective on the investments, definitely better. If we say we wait for 30 years, for 50 years, then the business will become different because then you will have the installed power from others. In 30 years from now, in 40, 50 years from now, we will have so much energy installed from other applications that the fluctuations will be enough. So we want to be very transparent in this. If we want to have cutting edge technology, changing something, aviation in the next 20 years, you have to look at this picture. If you want to change it in 50 years from now, then can do business as usual, secure your hydrocarbons from well or from wherever for the next 20, 30 years, and then you can do business as usual.
The point is, I can tell you, others can be faster, they can do this business, and they understand this business from a holistic perspective, and then we would have products coming into our markets, which we do not build. So that would be a pity. So with this in mind, I think taking care that we want this change in the next 20 years, we have to tackle this one, this challenge, not just the challenge using SAF, two, three, five, ten percent, and then going into business as usual. So with this in mind, I'm very happy that we have this fair here for the first time since two years now we have the exchange. I met a lot of colleagues, so there is a lot of dynamic. We have ourselves 28 open positions, engineering, program management, and so on, who is interested can join. With this in mind, I have to say it's a very optimistic way forward. We will see what the future brings, but I can tell you technology works. So with this in mind, thank you very much. And if there are questions, let me know.